for Michael. It seems to me that <coughs> Tom Sanders is like a nice guy in the wrong place. Or can you tell us a little about him? Well, you know, yeah, I think probably Tom Sanders is one of those guys who made certain choices in his life. Um, he balanced his ambition with the quality of his life, loves living in Seattle, lives in an island off of Seattle, lovely wife, goes sea kayaking, um, enjoys, enjoys the quality of his life, does a very good job, works hard, but probably lacks the kind of competition uh, and the need to succeed uh, that some other people have a need for. I think the movie is, is about um, corporate politics and how, in the case of Tom Sanders, a man who wasn't prepared uh, for the merger of two companies and the fact that there might be somebody from the other company who would be coming in to take his position. And I don't think he was prepared for the kind of politics and intrigue. So that's what I think disclosure is about. Uh, I mean, part of those corporate politics and intrigue involves the issue of sexual harassment. But the movie is, is really about whether Tom is going to succeed and get his job, get a raise, get back together with his family or not. I think that um, because sexual harassment has become such a, a cause celebre, although as I've said before, it is an issue that has existed throughout society for a very, very long time. I mean, going back to the Greeks and Romans or even the caveman used to have that old image of the club, you know, hitting, dragging her into the cave with a hair. I don't support that, uh, but th that whole image has existed for, uh, and reality has existed for a long time. So I think as soon as we s reverse these roles and we do a story about a man being sexually harassed, that we're going to have a, you know, a lot of dis discussion. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of women who will resent the fact that when there's such a real problem with women in harassment, why we would make a movie that would reverse the roles. And hopefully we'll have um, some good debates and some good conversation. I'm extremely concerned about our inability of the sexes to talk to each other. And I think that, that I, I'm afraid that a lot of time sexual harassment is about power and it's about controlling a situation as much as it is about the actual incident or continued incidences. And, uh, you know, it's, it's already happened. We have many movie companies now who have seminars for men and women and how to behave. Do not touch your secretary on the shoulder. Uh, never touch her on the leg. Uh, you know, these are things that I thought we would don't need people to instruct us how to behave. Um, but it also shows there must be a tremendous amount of anger uh, between the sexes and, 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 and a lot of frustration. And yeah, I am very concerned that we're going to um, um, homogenize all of us or make us, you know, uh, so stereotyp stereotypes. He's great. I, I have never worked with Barry Levinson before. This was my first film. I've liked a lot of the movies that he's done. Uh, it's the most relaxed set I think I've been on. He's a great joke teller, and you know, obviously, I, my character doesn't get a chance to have a lot of humor in this movie, so we find it where we can. But uh, Barry's got, he's got great eyes, great ears. You know, he really watches and he, and he hears very well. And then he finishes it, and he's always got, you know, that reminds me. And he's got another joke to tell you. You know, and he's he's uh, he used to be a comedian. He used to do stand-up comedy. He won't tell, but if you do an interview with him, ask him about it. He used to be an actor. He used to do stand-up comedy, so I've had a very enjoyable time working with him. Well, acting allows you to enjoy acting. You know, you don't have any other responsibilities. Uh, you can enjoy being selfish. I mean, it's particularly when you're in every single scene, uh, like I am in, in Disclosure, to have to be worrying about the production and all the other problems. And as long as I'm able to, you know, make my opinions spoken and, and tell Barry, you know, what I feel, and he listens very well. 
Uh, I'm happy, so I'm, I don't see myself very much anymore producing and acting in the same movies. I have a, a company and we produce movies and uh, maybe one or two of them I will be in, but I like to separate the roles. It's more, more fun. Well, it is in a certain sense because, yes, when we start working, it's very intense, but you know we have what we call a start date and then we have a stop date. So you can look down the line, you can look three months, four months, five months away and know that there's going to be a stop date. And then it's just a question of controlling, you know, the rest of your life. Uh, I mean, I'm always reading scripts either as an actor or as a producer and, and that's probably why I don't read as many books as I'd like to because I'm always reading scripts, most of them bad. But, and I'm able to, as you get older, to separate it much more so. I mean, for me, it's never been an issue about the part but, but good movies, you know, I mean, too many times actors or actresses only look at their parts, you know, and they, they don't even think about the movie. Well, it doesn't matter if you have a good part if the movie doesn't work. So it's, you know, it's hard to find structures that are, that, that the script is in very good shape and that you really like to do. And also the challenge, you know, because each year you've done more pictures. And you say, well, I've done this picture, this is like Fatal Attraction, yeah, you know, this isn't really a challenge anymore and, and I I enjoy the risk factor of making movies I enjoy being scared I enjoy the challenge of boy can I do this or will they like this I mean for me playing it safe it just doesn't give me any satisfaction